For this video, what I want to do is walk you through the following scenario. So what we have below is a picture of a bicycle chain with the pedal and the rear gear. Okay, and if you think about it, the back tire, so bear with me, I'm going to try to draw a back tire. Not very well. Okay, um, but the back tire is going to spin when this gear is rotated. Okay, so the back tire has a radius of 14.6 inches. Okay, and what we want to know is what is our forward distance that this bicycle will move if we rotate the pedals 180 degrees. So if you think about it, 180 degrees means that we're going to take and turn this pedal halfway around. Okay, and we want to see what happens if I rotate this halfway, what is my forward distance going to be of the bicycle? Okay. In order to solve this, what we are going to do is we are going to have to find the arc length. Okay, You can think of it as a sector, but we're just trying to figure out if I were to cut this off, how much um, distance linearly, so forward wise, um, so if you can imagine a string being around the circle, if you cut it in half and you stretched it out, you're trying to figure out what is your forward distance going to be. So to do that, our formula is S equals R times theta, where theta is our angle of rotation in radians. Okay, it is important that you are dealing with this in radians and that you are not in degrees. If you are using it in degrees, you have to use a different formula and there are textbooks that do it that way where you just do the conversions um, of the circle, like what portion of the circle, but it's easier just to work in radians. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to convert our 180 degrees into radians. So remember to do that, our conversion factor is pi over 180. So this one's nice because it just simplifies to pi. So this is our radians that we are rotating. So we are rotating half of a circle. All right, so our next step is to figure out what is this arc length of the pedals or the gear that's around the pedals. So we're gonna use the formula, like I said, S equals R times theta. So R is 4.72 and theta is our radians. So if you wanted to, you could leave this at in its exact form and not approximate it. I do find that students run into a lot of problems, especially if you're using an online homework platform where they're really picky about what you round it to, that if you round too much at the beginning, um, your answer is not going to be as precise. So if you do round, I advise rounding to at least four decimal places. The more decimal places you have, the more precise your final answer will be. So since we're going to be using this for further calculations, I recommend either leaving it in its exact form, or if you do round, round to a minimum of four decimal places. After um, that, it just becomes more accurate, but most of the time I find that if I have four decimal places, my final answer ends up being pretty much the same as the first one, at least within the first couple of decimal places. All right, so we found that we rotated this arc 14.8283 inches. Okay, so what's gonna happen is this gear back here, if we talk about this gear back here, this gear is going to rotate the same distance that the pedal gear rotated. Okay, so the rear gear is equal to the distance of the pedal. Okay, so since our pedal rotated 14.8283 inches or 4.72 pi inches, our gear is going to do the same thing. So you can imagine that this one's going to spin a lot more than this one did. Okay, because this one's larger to rotate 14.8283, it only had to do half a circle. But if you look at this one, it's going to have to make more rotation, which means that um, the angle rotated is going to be a lot larger. So again, we want this in terms of radians. So when we get the answer to this one, it will be in radians. So we're gonna use the same formula, S equals R times theta. 
The thing is, is that now we know s. So we can either plug it in as 4.72 pi equals my radius of the gear, which is 1.36 times my angle of rotation, um, which is theta. Okay, um, so this time our unknown is our radian measure. Okay, um, if this confuses you, I know that a lot of my students don't like to work like that because they don't like to leave it in terms of pi. You could also set it up as 14.8283 equals 1.36 pi. And of four decimal places, these gave me the same answer when I did the math. So there wasn't any problems with it. Had I rounded this to 14.8, there would have been a lot more error in the calculations. So we would divide both sides by 1.36. And again, you could leave it like this as an exact answer if you wanted to, to keep working with. But I do find that this scares a lot of my students. So when you use your calculator, you can just take your last answer and divide it by the next one, and that'll give you the same thing as leaving it as an exact answer. Okay, so what we ended up with here is that our radian measure is going to be approximately 10.9032 radians. Okay, so that's how much we rotated, which means that we went more than one time around. Okay, because 2 pi would give us approximately um, 6.28. So we know that we went almost three times around. Um, I should have calculated that. But this one is spinning a lot more, even though this one only went halfway. Because this one is so small, it had to make almost three full circles in order to um, be equivalent or to go the same distance. All right, so now what happens is since we have concentric circles, Whatever angle this one rotates, the angle on the, or the circle on the outside also rotates through the same angle measure. Okay, so the angle measure for the bicycle, so I can put that the bicycle tire, will rotate the same radians as the gear. So now to find the linear distance for the bicycle tire, okay, so in order to find this, we're going to use the same formula again, s equals r times theta, but this time our r is going to be 14.6, and then we would multiply it by our radian measure of 10.9032. And when we do this, we get approximately 159.186 inches. And I did go through and do the calculations with both the exact and the rounded versions. And it was the same to um, within the first three decimal places. After that is where the differences lie. So had I rounded this to 10.9, it would have given me a much less accurate answer. So again, round, if you're rounding, round to at least four decimal places. So our final answer is that when we turn the pedals 180 degrees, the bicycle moves forward by 159.186 inches. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.